Big thanks to Kamada Joe for sponsoring this episode. Beef ribs, as you know them, are about to change. Beef ribs are a wonderful thing, and in the past years they have grown to epic proportions, almost to the status of a brisket. And there's good reasons for that. Because it's juicy, it's tender, and when you barbecue them, they just become oh, so intense, so flavorful, so aromatic. And that's why we all love them. But today, we're changing all of that. You, me, we are gonna make beef ribs better. Woo! Let me show you the old beef ribs first. These are beef ribs as we know them, and this is how we love them so much. This is a Black Angus rack of short ribs. Beautiful ribs at the bottom with a thick layer of meat laying on top of them. And all they need is a little bit of seasoning. The first step in the traditional beef ribs way is to remove the silver skin, make the ribs look good, and then work on a seasoning, which in my case is going to be the Texas beef rub. It consists of a tablespoon of salt, two tablespoons of ground black pepper, half a tablespoon of garlic powder, and half a tablespoon of onion powder. Mix that up and sprinkle it onto your traditional beef ribs. And then of course it's time to fire up your Kamado Joe. Remove the grill grates, the heat deflectors, and get rid of the ashes sitting on the bottom of your grill. Add some fresh charcoal, light it up, and once it's burned down, add a chunk of smoke wood, put the heat deflectors back in, and the clean grill grates, of course. Place the beef ribs on, make sure you stick in a thermometer so you can keep a track on your traditional beef ribs, and set the barbecue to smoke at a temperature of 140 degrees Celsius. Once the beef ribs hit a core temperature of 70 degrees Celsius, it's time to wrap them. Place the ribs back onto the barbecue and let them cook until a core temperature of 92 degrees Celsius which is really important to get the perfect traditional beef ribs. Let them rest for at least an hour or so, and then it's time to unpack, and that's how you just created the perfect traditional barbecue beef ribs. Now, let me show you the other way to make beef ribs. And you probably haven't seen this before because it's never been done before. Beef ribs are not the same as baby back ribs. Beef ribs are more like a special cut. Something really completely different compared to what we do with our pigs. And the idea with the pigs is that we use waste and turn them into something delicious. That's why barbecue meat traditionally is very cheap. But somehow when beef ribs got into play, we forgot all about that and took a most expensive cut and then turned it into something freaking expensive, which tasted good but cost a lot of money. How about we go back to the original idea, take a little bit of waste and make that freaking amazing. And this is my waste because this is like the baby back ribs of beef. Maybe you recognize it from the back. Can you tell which ribs these are? Normally on the other side, you would have, that's right, ribeye. This would normally be a giant rib roast, but people order ribeye. So what do they do? They cut off the ribeye and this is scraps. This gets trimmed up and all these little bits go into a meat grinder and end up in your burger. But I've got a better way than to turn this into burgers. We can use this waste and turn it into the most delicious beef ribs you've ever had. Side note, before I'm getting started on preparing this, the biggest question that people have is how do I order this at the butcher because this is not in the store. That's correct. This is in the waste bin, so you gotta order it special. Just ask the butcher for him to give you the bones when he takes the ribeye off. So he has that beautiful piece, and then instead of throwing that in the trash, the bones, give them to you. Well, maybe you pay him a little bit, but you get the idea. You gotta have your butcher on speed dial anyways, because there might be a Pitmaster Tricks video on Thursday and you need it by Friday. <laughs> I'm gonna sprinkle down a little bit of the beef rub we made earlier. I'm gonna flip it around and do the same thing on the other side. Now with the membrane, we do want to cut into it. Normally I would just tear the membrane off, but with these ribs, we're going to use a technique that requires us to leave the membrane on. Then the rub goes onto the membrane, and now it can actually penetrate into the meat. And to make sure that that happens, I'm gonna rub it in with my hand, get it nice and in there, in the nooks and crannies, a little bit extra, more flavor, the better it is. And now this is also ready for the barbecue. I currently have my Kamado still set up the way that it would traditionally be set up when smoking beef ribs. 
But that's gonna change because we're not smoking the traditional beef rubs. No, no, no. We're going to be roasting. Ah, oh, that's hot. I burn, I burn myself again. I'm gonna remove the heat deflectors and we're gonna expose the charcoal that sits on the bottom. And with my ash tool, I'm going to remove all the ashes, let them fall into the ashtray, breaking up the big block charcoal a little bit so it's nice and evenly spread out. And then it's time for me to put the grill grates back in. And now I'm going to put the ribs straight onto the barbecue. And look at the size of this piece of meat. And now I'm grilling these beef ribs over direct heat. The heat is coming straight up to that membrane and roasting in it at a temperature of around 140 degrees. But the difference between this and the traditional beef ribs is that we have radiation heat instead of convection heat. With this setup, I gotta make sure that I control my temperatures because the fat of the meat is going to render down, it's going to drip into the fire, it's going to create all kinds of amazing flavor. But we want things to slow down. I want it to really be roasted at a low temperature as possible. So I'm going to go down to the bottom vent and I'm going to set it to like a millimeter like this tiny bit so you can just fit the nail of your finger into it that's the only little bit that's going to be open and at the top we're going to leave it open so the hot air and the smoke can escape so we have clean air coming up from the bottom and we're basically smoldering the fire a little bit we got to check on it regularly because it's going to go a lot faster then with the smoked beef ribs, it's more of a gentle version, the traditional one. And now we're really getting into the hardcore version of it. 20 minutes have gone by, time to check on the ribs. Wow, look at that. The bones already started popping. Now let's take a look on the other side. Whoa, look at the caramelization of the meat. The membrane started to crispen up and that's why we needed to cut into it so that it will turn into crunchy, delicious meat. And this thing is starting to look freaking amazing. Bones are starting to pop, which means the meat is tearing off the bones. We're getting nice crusty bark on the outside. Now we're going to do exactly the same thing at the other side of the meat. And as you can see, we're getting flare ups from the fat dripping down. So we got to close the lid quickly and let this beautiful meat continue to cook. We want just as nice of a crust. We want just as nice of juicy meat on one side as on the other. And keep in mind that cooking time is gonna be completely different because you're working with thin meat and you're working with the ribs that were connected to the ribeye, which means much more tender meat than that you're used to with beef ribs. Another 20 minutes have gone by and it's time to check on the ribs and whoo, bones are popping. Absolutely gorgeous looking meat. Look at that caramelization, look at that redness. And you can see we got a little bit of a shiner here. The fat's rendered down. This looks like one of the best barks that I ever had on beef ribs. And I achieved this result in only 40 minutes of cooking time. I I'm waiting for the applause, do you hear? Do you wanna taste it first? And before we taste it, of course, we're gonna do a long rest because we've been stressing out this meat like no other. The meat is shrunken up. And it's just like, it feels like this. And then we need it to go like this again, like, oh. I'm gonna wrap these ribs up so that we can do a side-by-side -side comparison to our traditional ribs. Before I'm gonna show you the end result, I'm first gonna give you my favorite beef rib sauce. This is our new and perfected Alabama white sauce made out of one cup of mayonnaise, half a cup of apple cider vinegar, half a tablespoon of salt, a tablespoon of garlic powder, a tablespoon of sugar, a tablespoon of coarse black pepper, and two tablespoons of horseradish. And we're finished off with one teaspoon of Worcester sauce. And we always keep on perfecting our sauces. And we think this is one of the world's best versions of the Alabama white sauce. Let us know what you think of our recipe. And now we're ready for the side-by-side -side comparison. Of course, the taste test is going to be performed. But first, let's take a look on the outside of the ribs and see what the difference is between traditional and the new way to grill ribs. Let's first take a look at the bark of this beautiful traditionally smoked beef rib. You can see that the color of the bark is dark brown. It is moist on the outside because it's been wrapped and it's been resting. And the bark looks freaking amazing. There's a little bit of dark red visible here. And overall, it looks very, very tasty. But then let's go over here and take a look at these roasted beef ribs. 
The color spectacle on these ribs is phenomenal. We got dark red, just like beef jerky over here. Then we got some of that barbecue bark over here. We got rendered out fat here. So we got so much more different colors and it looks so much better than the traditional smoked beef ribs. Now in itself, that's not saying much because looks can be deceiving and it all comes down to what it tastes like. A good telltale sign to see if you cooked your ribs properly is to see if the bones already popped. So the meat starts pulling away from the bone. You can see that it happened to our roasted ribs and you can see that it happened to our smoked ribs. Are they fall apart tender? Well, let's find out. Let's see with the grilled ribs. Can we pull them out? We can almost pull them out, but we have to apply a little bit of force. Same with the beef ribs. We can pull them out, but it's not full of part tender. Now let's slice into them and take a look inside. Look at that. A beautiful smoke ring, juicy ribs, all around great tasty looking ribs. Let's take a look at the traditional beef ribs. Beautiful smoke ring once again. Delicious and juicy, just like we like them. And now comes my favorite part. The taste test. <laughs> right, grilled ribs first. Mm. <laughs> mm. No. Mm. Let's start by saying both of the ribs taste freaking amazing. This is excellent result and you can serve this up to your guests anytime. Don't worry about it. It's going to be good and tasty. But the smoked ribs, they have their traditional flavor profile. The meat is succulent and soft and tender. And it's really something that you have to put effort into and you have to take, you have to almost love it and take care of it like a little baby. With the grilled ribs, they're much more manly and tough and manhandled like they kind of need to be mistreated to taste good. You got to have that crust and crunchy bit and all these kinds of things. You trade off a little bit of tenderness to these ribs, but you get cheaper ribs. They taste freaking amazing and they take a lot less time to cook. So if you're up for a shorter cook, a cheaper rib and a real manly bite, then you might want to try these beautiful roasted ribs. So go to your butcher and ask him for his garbage. Mm. The sauce. Oh, now that is an Alabama white sauce. Forget about chicken, man. Roll Tide. Mm. Oh. The combination. Out of this world. 